I just sat down right before we connected here, and I haven't caught up with the latest news. I want to know if Mitch McConnell is all right. He his his human suit started to slide off of his frame <laughs> last night during the speech. Really droopy looking, like Vincent D'Onofrio in Men in Black. Yeah, it's just kind of kind of hanging off his skeletal frame, his space like he, alien frame underneath. Yeah, yeah, he had a sad. He looked a little sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's like a slee stack who dressed up like a person, and then this costume doesn't quite fit that, right. He that one, it back to Anna that Karen. that one slee stack that could speak English. He is that one slee stack. <laughs> That's right. Yes, he's Enoch. Enoch. Yeah, Enoch. Yes, the slee stack with his crystals. Yes, I yes. just feel like even he's got to know. Uh, it just his party looks like you know right now rooting for <laughs> putin necrotic. they can't yeah. hide that their front runner their last mm -hmm. president is rooting for putin and on top of it bob you can't argue with these numbers i mean mm -hmm. i don't know how you sit there and hear the president say we've had seven million jobs the gdp wages this that i mean they know that there's just no way to argue with with a lot of that yeah and they yeah. voted it's against so it all yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's so appropriate that a party like this is led by Mitch McConnell, who looks like he chose the wrong chalice in Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. <laughs> oh, you made, you made the wrong choice, Mitch McConnell. I see you've chosen. Oh, well. You're melting the ornate, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ornate grail, and now it's disintegrating you in real time. We're watching you fall apart on television. <laughs> I, he actually, he looked very sad. He I did. Feel bad for him. You yeah. want to put your arm around him and say, it, "It's okay." It's not going to be. It's Turtles not going to be okay, Mitch. But. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, turtles can't smile. Uh, that's <laughs> such a shame. Well, you also uh, tweeted, you retweeted uh, uh, Ezra Klein, or as I like to call him, Urza. Uh, he <laughs> said, it's going to be an exquisite bit of irony if after helping Donald Trump win the election in 2016, Putin becomes the reason Trump can't win the election or even a Republican primary in 2024. You just, yeah, said, you yeah. just said silver linings. I mean, I, I was right. saying Putin might be what gets us energy independent. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of silver yeah. linings. He, he strengthened NATO. You know, he right. thought Donald Trump, as uh, Hal Sparks, you know, had tweeted, he thought Trump had weakened NATO enough for him, you know, that it was, that yeah. it, you know, and he wasn't going to get a Trump second term and just be given Ukraine. It, it, it's it, 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 there's no mystery why Putin did this now. Right. Oh, yeah. But yeah, he badly yeah. well, miscalculated because NATO is Joe Biden has unified NATO like never before. Right. Since uh, and, and this is sort of my analysis of this. It began in 2013 with Edward Snowden. And that whole operation, I think, launched Vladimir Putin's modern offensive against the West, Western democracies. Thank you. He's been softening the ground for what he's doing right now since 2013. I mean, it really hit the ground in 2014 when he literally did invade Ukraine. But then you've got a series of cyber attacks, this whole drive that yeah. we've been witnessing with great shock and horror for the last five, six years where he's been installing autocracies or at least attempting to you know this rise of authoritarianism has been entirely driven by vladimir putin and this ongoing disinformation campaign which is kind of ironic given the fact that this invasion of ukraine at least so far and knock on all the wood yeah has been kind of a failure for yeah. him yeah. i mean i'm just I'm, I'm qualifying that by saying kind of <clears throat> Because the Eeyore side of me, the pessimist, the cup half empty side of me, goes, yeah. ah, there's another shoe getting ready to drop over there. Well, I was and saying him being, <clears throat> you know, not just excoriated, but humiliated, you know, again, Mad Men is very dangerous. Yeah, you retweeted, oh, yeah. Uh, Zini tweeted, Edward Stone, Glenn Greenwald, Julian Assange are all Russian assets. I worked with them at a shady nonprofit that laundered money for WikiLeaks. There's a reason wow. Ed's in Moscow. They're filth. Assange once called me worse than a Jew. And you just said, I'll add my theory, the Snowden op in 2013-14 was Putin's opening shot in his modern offensive against Western democracy, then Crimea, then 2016, etc. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I keep yeah. talking about, you know, the media falling down on the job once again with not making more of, oh, Manafort? Oh, the guy that installed the Putin puppet in Ukraine <laughs> is Donald Trump's? Right. Oh, that's weird. Oh, he shared polling yeah. data in the swing states that <laughs> Hillary lost by a sliver. Right? I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, he installed a Putin puppet here. I mean, and, it, it's, yeah. and that's, again, the thing <clears throat> that I think everybody's saying Putin hasn't figured out is they've already overthrown. We overthrew our Putin puppet. They overthrew their mm -hmm. Putin puppet. They will never submit to Russian rule, even if yeah. militarily they overtake them, right? It'll be really fascinating to see how many Putin puppets inside the United States uh, uh, get frustrated with their cause, get yeah. frustrated with their contract, I should say. 
<laughs> because they're not going to get paid <laughs> as long as these sanctions are applied. I don't know how they're going to get their money. I mean, I, you know, I've kind of looked at this and and hypothesized a few things because obviously we have very little evidence. But I believe that there are these. Uh, I think there are a lot of dark money groups that are funneling cash, like Zenny reported, uh, funneling cash to uh, influencers, activists here in the United States, even people like Donald Trump, for God's sake. I mean, obviously yeah. we don't need any more evidence of that but um i mean beyond eric trump saying we get most of our money from russia oh so i'm not supposed to say it out loud (laughs) (laughs) yeah i know whoops and then uh you know i think there are a lot of people who actively defend russia here in the united states with gigantic platforms on social media who probably aren't getting paid (laughs) at least the last seven days they're a little yeah. bit, uh, <laughs> yeah. The hurting. rubles yeah. ran out. Yeah. The rubles are worth a penny. Um, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> by the way, I don't know. I know you and your other nerd caucus, Travis Bone, will be talking about this. <laughs> Is there a special nerd booking, you know, service that runs right through the Stephanie it's, Miller show? It's the nerd hotline. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warner Brothers has announced it has uh, halted its plans to release the Batman in Russia. Um, this was supposed to happen Friday. I'm just telling you, you nerds, you may save the world. Yeah. There'll, yeah. there'll be a revolution. Oh, yeah. They'll be like, yet we're out. I'll show you a dark night. Sony, Sony also announced plans to pause its plans to release uh, Morbius, uh, the upcoming Marvel uh, superhero movie, um, and up, other upcoming theatrical releases in Russia. Disney had announced uh, it's going to pause Pixar's Turning Red. Um, I, I'm just saying, you yeah. nerds, you nerds are gonna. This is what's nerds! really good. <laughs> gonna save the world. We saved Hollywood, and now we're going to save the world with our our sanctions. That's right. We're, we're not letting just because the Russians aren't going to get to see the Batman and these couple of other movies that I, I just com- I I completely tuned that out because it wasn't the Batman that you were talking about. So right. I, I don't know the other movies that you mentioned, but <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, because the Batman is not going to be seen in Russia, that is going to bring world peace. And yes, you can thank all of us. Bring next. Russia to its knees. <laughs> is it safe to say, Bob? <laughs> that's that's exactly going gonna- to. Is it safe to say it's going to be a dark night in the theaters? Oh, really? <laughs> really, nerd? Really, nerd? Really? Oh, God. I'll just share. Don't you hear a nation of snorting? <laughs> just <laughs> other nerds listening to the radio. <laughs> Travis. <laughs> All right, nerds. Everybody settle. Well, by the way, correction. It, uh, Chris, it is not being, the reviews are not mixed. Actually, it's uh, 86% on Rotten Tomatoes right now for mm. the Batman. Take that. So. Take that. take that, Chris. Non-nerd. With your with your facts. I, I, I just read that Robert Pattinson look, looks bored throughout the whole thing. <laughs> All right, listen. Can we just... You know, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but he, it looks great. I mean, I'm not... I said to Travis yesterday, I'm not a huge fan of the new Batman suit, but I'm I'm very nitpicky when it comes to that. But I just the, love the, the idea. I just... Amazing. The specter of a bunch of Russian shoulders, like, psycho-stabbing their own fuel tanks. No! Batman! No! We're done! <laughs> we're staying in Ukraine where they have the Batman. I surrender! <laughs> Take me to the movie theater! Is Batman being released in right. Ukraine? I surrender. <laughs> I surrender. They're going AWOL for the Batman. Right. That's right. Now that we're in Ukraine and we can see the Batman here, we're going to see the Batman. I surrender it. if you take me to the multiplex. I would like Juju Beats, please. <laughs> okay. By the way, um, you also speaking of the speaking of films. Now. Why doesn't this work? You're you're a fan of the TikTok now because of Tank Girl. Um, oh yeah. Somebody tweeted the future is a very weird place. Ukrainians are uploading videos on TikTok about how to drive uh, abandoned or captured Russian military vehicles. Uh, and you just mm. said, I'm not on TikTok. I have no plans for it. But videos like this might make me change my mind. Yeah, yeah. I did one TikTok. That was it. We kind of gave up on that, didn't we? <laughs> we we sure posted a few yeah, Listen, if I capture a tank, I'll make another one. Okay. <laughs> Well, that was that was so great. I mean, if yeah. I wasn't you know, if I wasn't spoken for, mm. <laughs> I'd be calling uh, Tank Girl. Yes, hey, hey, yes. Pick me up in your tank. I mean, and, no, in all seriousness, that was a, an amazing little clip. Yes, because usually <laughs> when if, you abandon your heavy machinery like that, you abandon your artillery or whatever, you're being overrun by an enemy. You spike those things, and what that means is you disable them, right? So no one else can use them. And whoever was manning that tank basically said, okay, I'm gifting this to the Ukrainian people. Here, yeah. have my yes. tank. Yes, yes. Because and whoever it was that didn't disable it, and they should. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad they didn't. I, yeah. I'm not spoken for, but it give, they give me a fla- uh, flashback, right, Chris? My oh. long-term ex was, a, and this yes. is not a joke, <laughs> she was an Israeli tank instructor slash runway model slash radio sales executive yes. when we met her. Well, but, yeah, yeah. But also a tank instructor. Uh, yeah. Hot. She's tank girl. Hot. 
Okay. So listen, you also, uh, somebody uh, tweeted, uh, I'm conflicted. There's part of me that realizes we need to pay attention to what these nut jobs are doing. Another part of me wants to give them no clicks, no attention, no retweets. You keep saying ignoring them will not make them go away. <clears throat> because yep. this is, I know, and we take crap whenever we play a Trump soundbite or whatever. I try to, we try to limit it, but, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, you cannot ignore, you know, what's happening out there that is a threat to our own democracy. Can yeah, we? Yeah. Right, right. Well, put it this way. This is the question I always ask people because I always get that. Maybe once a week I get someone complaining in my mentions on Twitter. Saying, right. Why are you paying attention to these people, Bob? Well, here's the question. If the Republicans decided to stop paying attention to Joe Biden, for example, would that be good news for Joe Biden or bad news for Joe Biden? It would unequivocally be good news for Joe Biden. So you reverse it. Uh, Why would we ever want to stop, you know, calling out fact checking, uh, uh, paying attention to the ridiculousness? of these people who are actively tearing down American democracy. Yeah. Um, it's just utter madness. It only hurts them. Yeah. To, well, because, people, first these of all, go- they're already famous. They're people. Already, they're already right. famous. Yeah, people, these, you know, mooks, yell at me for, like, watching Chuck Todd or whatever. But, I, again, like, you, you can't just stay in your bubble in terms of what, you right. know, you just want to watch what makes you feel better because you have to understand why Joe Biden's approval ratings are whatever they are, right? And why they talk. Yeah. It's like an endless circle, and then that's all they talk about is his negative, you know, because of right. all the, you know, they've talked about him. So you have to see, like, how things are being presented to know how we're getting here. I mean, and you were talking about, uh, for instance, this trans thing. You have to talk about what's happening because mm-hmm. uh, Aaron tweeted, they've started the process to try to take transgender kids from their parents in Texas. They're actually doing it. This is unconscionable. Ugh. And you just said this is monstrous, utterly, utterly monstrous. And so, yeah, you know, yeah. we're banning books in America where, you know what I mean? It's just we don't say gay. It's happening in America. I mean, it's it's, it's almost a uh, it's almost like a backdoor form of ethnic cleansing. I mean, it's obviously not we're not talking about the ethnicities here, but we're what we're talking about is cleansing the, the red states of anyone who's not a, a cis uh, a straight white male, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're Texas actively forcing women of reproductive age out of their state uh, by taking away those women's uh, sovereignty over their own body. Uh, Now what we're doing is we're persecuting trans children by going after their parents with the Child Protective Services, as if there's some form of child abuse going on here, which is absolutely not happening. Obviously, none of these Republicans who make these laws have any sense whatsoever what it's like to be a parent of a trans person or to actually be a trans person. So they don't have any empathy there. So this is just we're, what we're doing is we're clearing out all the undesirables from our land. And, and how is that any different than some yeah. of the despotism that we've seen? Yeah. One of the most anti-democratic things that we have seen yeah. in the history of we, this country. What a dark chapter. Talk about is. not, you know, if you don't read history, I mean, you're doomed to repeat it if you don't learn it. And we were yeah. talking yesterday about Putin targeting gays. It's like, go crack mm-hmm. a book about World War II. Hitler started with gays. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's... I remember Mitch McConnell's face last night during the State of the Union, how, how he looked so sad. Yeah. He was thinking about black people voting. That's yes. He yeah. So All right. Thank yeah. you, Bob, for that. I appreciate it. I didn't know what was in his thought bubble. Love you, Bob. Bob Seska. The Bob Seska show is essential. Uh, Listen for the nerd booking. 